Hi, everyone. This is Rob Gray from ASU in the Perception Action Podcast, back with another article review. In today's episode, what I want to do is look at a couple new recent papers on focus of attention and performance, focus of attention and learning, and that have addressed some of the issues that common issues, critiques people have raised about the literature. So if you listen to the podcast at all, if you read my books, most people know what this literature is, the focus of attention idea, right? As defined by Wolf, right? There's two main thing ways we can direct an athlete's attention. We can direct it internally. That's when we uh, direct an athlete's attention towards their body while they're executing their skill. So place your shooting hand behind the ball, push off from your feet, bend your knees, right? These are all examples of internal cues. We oppose that to external cues. This is when we get the athlete to focus on the effect the movement of their body has on the environment. Where in Wolf's, by Wolf's definition, environment includes any equipment you're holding, right? So pushing off from the ground, put, getting spin on the ball, right? Uh, focusing on the rim when you're shooting. Those are all examples of external cues. You're not focusing on the body anymore. You're focusing on the effect of your movement on something else, right? Why is this important? I think as most people know, there's an overwhelming body of research for, from first started in 1998. I think in my second book, I call this a tidal wave of research, right? There's very few things in motor learning or skill acquisition that have this much evidence, right? So uh, largely started by Gabby Wolf and colleagues and followed on for since 1998. There's 73 studies that have demonstrated superior performance in the moment for focus of attention, uh, external focus of attention, attention on the effects of your movement and 40 studies which have looked shown benefits of motor learning, okay? So there's very strong evidence. This is their systematic review from 2021 that highlights all the evidence for it. I should mention, I'm going to briefly mention something here. I'm not going to comment on it too much because I haven't read the paper yet. I'm got, there's currently a uh, paper, I think, by McKay and colleagues in preprint that is challenging this, this body of evidence, right? suggesting that there's a lot of publication bias in it, right? Toward a, a lot of evidence that a lot of the confirm, confirmatory studies are getting published while other studies are not, right? That's the bulk, that seems to be their criticism. As I said, I'm not gonna comment on that because I haven't read it yet. I don't know much about it. But I just wanna point that out to you in case you're interested. There is some rumblings going on about this literature. But let's go start with the premise that there's external focus is better than an internal one, right? There's a lot of research showing that. Within that basic finding, though, there are some critiques that myself and other people have raised, right? The first one is a lot of the studies seem to use straw man internal focus of cues. And by that, I mean what they're doing is in the cue. So usually you give participants, or there's two groups, sometimes three, a control group, external cue, focus on pushing off from the ground an internal cue, focus on your hand, right? And you compare them. Uh, and a lot of the internal focus cues in previous research are extremely vague, right? And they're not anything that any coach would ever use. Just focus on your hand while shooting. No coach would ever say that. That's not giving any information to the learner, right? So they're not very realistic of what a coach might actually do. The second point is that people have raised is that the same internal cues are used for every participant in the group, in that group in the study, right? No coach, almost every good coach is going to customize their cue based on the individual performer, right? And the third one is across training blocks, um, a lot of studies have given the same cue over and over and over, right? Which again is not very realistic of, re of real coaching, right? So the two papers I'm going to talk about today tempted to address the first and third one I have listed there. They, the straw man internal focus cues will be the second paper, and the same cues in every training block will be the first paper. They attempted to address these. So let's look at these studies. So the first one is another study by Gabby Wolf and colleagues. In this case, they were looking at um, the effect of a focus of attention instructions on golf chipping performance, right? A lot of the paper is about motivation and self-efficacy and fitting them with the optimal model. I'm not really going to go into that. If you're interested, you can have a look at the paper. I'm not really, that's not really my concern today. I'm really focusing on the instruction. So they're, what they're going to do in this paper, they're going to look at across blocks, they're going to add different cues, right? Which uh, some people have done. I did this in my base, one of my baseball studies, right? So it's not like it hasn't been done before, but most of the studies have not. 
So they're going to they're going to use three different internal focus cues, three different external ones. And so what they're doing, they had 63, 36 undergraduate students. The task was to do a 10 meter pitch shot towards a bullseye on the on a uh, indoor green, right? The green, you got different points for how close you got to the center. Participants were pseudo randomly assigned to either internal or external focus group. Um, the in um, they matched by gender, okay. Um, they were given 20 practice trials for uh, 20 tri three blocks of 20 practice trials from the same the same distance on so the same 10 meter distance. The key manipulation here was that a different intentional cue was given each block, right? And uh, so one of the things we're going to see with this paper and the other one, right? That's pretty small amount of training, 60 trials, right? Um, is a very small amount of training, but they're going to show an effect. So they're, they're doing that. So they're giving those cues. Um, there's standard kind of manipulation checks, which I've never really had a, put a lot of weight on, where you ask the person what were they focusing on um, after the fact. Um, all purpose, they all performed a retention test and a transfer test. So they, they after learning, they, they I can't remember the, the time delay, they performed the same pitch shot, and then they performed it from a further distance. Okay. Um, so that was the basic design. So very similar to other kind of research in this area. Um, so what were the cues? So what they did was, the, the, one of the things I liked about this cues, they tried to roughly match them in terms of what they were focusing on. So they had one cue to focusing on the distance, the length of your swing, one focusing on the weight of your swing, and one focusing on the actual outcome. So in the swing distance or swing length, um, there was two cues. The internal focus group was focused on having a one-to-one -one swing ratio of your arms, so focusing on your body, where the external group was focused on having a one-to-one -one swing ratio of the club shaft. And the ratio they're talking about is the ratio of your backswing to your follow-through. So they're trying to get you to have a good follow-through, right? Um, either by focusing on your club or your arms. In the weight one, um, they were focused on either the weight of the club head, which is uh, external, or the grip pressure of your hands. Right? I'm not sure how that's exactly comparable, but um, they are at least related, right? Um, so those are the two. And then finally, the performance outcome was either focus on the landing point of the ball, external, or focus on the force control. Here you can see a little bit of the straw man complaint. What coach is ever going to say focus on force control, right? That's so vague, right? They're going to talk about some eternal cue that's way more specific to your swing, Focus on grip pressure. What about grip pressure? Have a more thumb over your hand, closed grip. Like they're going to give way more specifics. So this is kind of the, a complaint a lot of people have, and it's still present here. But that's just my two cents. Um, here's the results, right? So they found the standard thing. So um, pre-test, they were both the similar accuracy in terms of getting it close to the bullseye. Practice, what you can see is the group, at each practice, each of the blocks, there's a significantly better for the external focus. Um, it seems to be, the effects difference seems to be progressively larger, uh, significant difference at retention and transfer. So standard in benefit, uh, benefit of external focus of attention cues, right? So overall, it seems like the accurate, the benefits of external focus of attention cues, uh, the effects are not simply due to using one cue. Even when you change cues across blocks, you seem to, still get the same standard findings, even on delayed tests, retention tests, right? So still yet more evidence when we address this. So I think there's something good things about the study, changing the cues. I think there's still the straw man problem, right? I think some of the cues are not very realistic of what a coach, typical coaches that focus on technique and prescribe prescriptive coaching use. So I don't know if it's the best test, but you know, I think there's more evidence there. Okay, the second study I want to look at is by stricken colleagues. What they're going to look at here is compare different internal focus of attention cues. Um, again, trying to get at the kind of the straw man of having a very unrealistic one. So they're trying to, there's a variety of critiques put forward, people comparing um, the internal instructions are not very realistic of what coach, they're not really relevant to the task, right? They're not very specific to what you're trying to do. So they're recognizing this. So what they're going to use in there, they're going to use it to their task is going to be the standing long jump. And they're going to compare four different internal focus of cues versus a control condition where the, 
So this is a bit of a limitation for me here. Why they didn't have an external focus, I guess I'm not 100% sure. I've always had a problem with control conditions in this case because when you're telling an athlete just chip, so whether telling an athlete just do a long jump as best as your ability, you don't know. They could be internal, external, mix of both, right? And I, as I said, the manipulation checks, I don't really put a lot of weight on myself, but that's what they did in the study. 29 undergrads, they did 20 standing long jump. It was a within participant. So everybody did all the conditions. So they randomly, in random order, they did a control condition and four internal focus uh, cues, okay? Again, the training was incredibly short. They performed two jumps in, for each of the five cues, right? So very, very small number amount of training going on before moving on to the next. So that could be a critique here. Um, so here were the cues. The toe cue, I want you to focus on your toes when jumping as far as possible. Focus on pushing off from your toes down on the floor. So clearly an internal cue. Knees. I want you to focus on your knees when jumping as far as possible and extending your knees as fast as you can. Hips. I want to focus on your hips when jumping as far as possible. Focus on pushing forward with your hips as fast as you can. Arms. I want you to focus on swinging your arms forward during the jump. So those are four different external focus, internal focus of attention cues. Uh, focusing on different parts of the body, which I think is useful to directly compare these. Um, we might, you know, and in, in, if you believe in some of the hypotheses, like the constrained action hypothesis, I think there would be a general prediction, maybe that um, cues that focus on more proximal center of your body are more detrimental than focus ones that further away. But I'm not sure, there's not really easy way to test that. Um, in the control condition, they were just asked to perform the jumping test to the best of your ability, so we don't know what they're focusing on. These cues seem a little bit more like what a coach might actually say that is trying to prescribe and coach a, a technique and use internal cues, so getting a little bit better, for sure. Um, here's what they found. Um, so what they found, the main measure was how far you jumped. By far, the most significant Longest jump um, over 200 centimeters was in the control condition, right? When they were given no instruction. All of the internal cues were worse, right? With the knee and hip being worse than the toe and the arm, which maybe is getting at that proximal distal uh, effect I was talking about. Um, but, you know, don't make too much of that. But I think there's something interesting there. So I give the study credit for comparing lots of different internal focus of attention cues, it would have been beneficial to have an external condition to just to dot, complete the whole loop. Um, but I think it's still interesting there. So overall, I think these studies kind of add a little bit to the focus of attention literature, right? Uh, some of the concerns people have and some of the with the cues. Um, I think, you know, the uh, I think of not having the same cue all the time and some of the straw men, I think we still need, I would like to, I would still like to see a study, you know, I've done this a little bit in my research, but I really like to see a study where we go to coaches. What are the cues you use when teaching the long jump, right? And actually use those internal cues for, for the study, right? And then I think the big thing that remains for me to do is individualized cues, right? Every good coach adapts the cues they used based on the in, what the individual in front of them is doing and how they react. We need to do a, have a study that compares external and internal that does that. I haven't seen any of that yet. That's the big thing left for me to do to convince me, you know, that, that of this fully convince me of the benefit of external cues. So that's it for today's episode. Thanks for joining me and cheers for now and keep them coupled.